So therefore the curvature of a curve is given to be the length of the tangent vector, the derivative of the tangent vector, divided by the length of the derivative of the vector itself. Where again, t is a tangent vector, right? So that's going to be the, the derivative of the, of the vector divided by the length of the vector, or the magnitude of the vector. Okay, and again, this is called the unit uh, tangent vector itself. Okay, so why don't we do an example so you can see how this comes into play? This is very long because there's multiple stuff parts coming into play, so we'll just break this stuff down each individual case. So here's our RT. So we're going to write a couple things down. So first, we're going to find the derivative of R. So derivative cosine is going to be negative sine. And the derivative of sine is going to be positive cosine. Okay. And at the same token, we'll just get the length of our prime. So that's going to be equal to the square root of this squared, which just gives you a squared sine squared. Plus this again squared gives you a squared cosine squared. Now, if you notice, if I factor out a squared, sine squared plus sine squared gives you 1. So this is just the square root of a squared, which just gives you a, which is nice. So the magnitude of the derivative of r is just a. Okay. Now, we're all on the right track to get here. So we've got the bottom. Now we're just going to get the top, and that's using the tangent unit uh, vector. So we have everything we need. So the tangent unit vector is just the derivative divided by a in this case. So capital T of T, so the, the tangent vector, is all of this, each component divided by A. So if you notice, A's cancel, so our vector becomes just sine of T and cosine of T. Now according to our equation, i got to take the derivative of that. So again, the derivative of sine is positive, so this will be negative cosine t, because it was negative to begin with. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay. And now lastly, i got to find the length of this, which is nice, because if you square both of them, they just be positive no matter what. And like I said earlier, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. That's equal to 1. So now finally we can use the equation. So the curvature of this vector, or the curve at this vector, is going to be equal to the length of the tangent, the derivative of the tangent vector, which is just 1, divided by the length of the vector, the derivative of the vector, which is just a. And there we go. So that's how we use the derivative and its unit tangent derivative to find the curvature of the curve itself. Now, as stated, as you can see, this is a pretty lengthy process to deal with. Um, you have to do this, do this, and there's a lot of stuff going on everywhere, right? You not only do you have to memorize, you have to take the derivative and then the length, you also have to take the, the tangent, unit tangent vector and take that length, and then all this comes comes up come into play. So because of that, we have a different type of equation making it much easier with respect to only one vector. And that's this. So now this is only with respect to r, and only r, which is nice. So we're only dealing with one vector instead of having multiple vectors and multiple lengths of each vector. So this is saying we're going to take the first and second derivative, no matter what. And now we're going to take the cross product of the first and second derivative, find that length, and that's going to be the top scenario, divided by the 
length of the bobbin, but now it's going to be to the third power. Now, if you're wondering how they did this, is all they did was plug this in to there and just use some algebra to manipulate to make it look like that. Now, if you wonder how they get the cross product, is well, once you plug this into here, you get the double product, right? So the double length and it ends up being a orthogonal vector, which is the cross product, right? So it's a fun little fact how you go from here to here. It's pretty nicely some simple algebra, and then you know you take the derivative of this, so which is a quotient rule, plug that in, and that's what you get the cross product for.